Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series, The Unported Playlist, where we take a look at now 21 of my favorite arcade games that never received traditional home ports. And today it is Night Slashers, released in 1993 by Data East. And I would say that this is my favorite beat-em-up of all time. Not only is it a super competent beat-em-up game, but I absolutely love the horror aesthetic. You're smashing in zombie heads, you're beating up Dracula, Frankenstein's monster. This game has something for everyone if you're a fan of horror. Now off the top, I will say that this actually has been ported to the Switch, and I have played that port. But honestly, I find there to be a lot of lag in the controls, and the sound is a little bit off. And considering the soundtrack of this game is so incredible, and I love it so much, to me, it's not really the way to play. I am emulating this right here. I've been looking for an original PCB for a long time, and I just haven't seen one come up for sale. But when they do, they certainly aren't cheap. I think they probably would go for $750 to $1,000 on a good day. But it's just a game that you're not going to see for sale that often. I love how these body bags roll down almost like grubs and they open up with those zombies. Graphically, this game has a ton of detail in it. It looks awesome. It's a really great kind of like that 16-bit look. An evolution of like something on the Super Nintendo just with a little bit more arcade power. And to me, it's really surprising this game doesn't get talked about more than it does. Because I think it is definitely one of the best beat-em-ups of all time. I think that's a thing with Data East in general. If you're a gaming fan, you know the name, but they never get included in the conversation with people like Sega or Capcom or Namco as far as arcade game makers, even companies like Midway are going to get more of the press. But Data East made a ton of amazing games that are definite classics, and I think Night Slashers is one of them. As far as the mechanics of the game are concerned, it is a basic beat-em-up. You have some special moves that will damage your life bar, but otherwise you have some punches, you have some kicks, and you see that special move right there. I love that sprite work and the transparencies that come through. Definitely shows a lot of what Data East could do as far as like an art style and a graphical style are concerned. Now as far as the gameplay, the bosses can be a little bit cheap. You're going to see here that I'm basically just getting stuck in a loop. But additionally, you can kind of trick the bosses to basically get stuck in a loop themselves. You can continue to kick them back up and kick them again, and you can basically spam them for the most part. They'll eventually escape, but you can definitely kind of cheese the game a little bit. What I want to do is just stop talking for a minute so you can hear a little bit of the soundtrack because it is absolutely one of my favorite soundtracks of all time in gaming. But I'll be back shortly and we'll talk more about Night Slashers. You can definitely get juggled by these enemies a lot, they're going to kick you back into that blade there. But the game feels relatively fair, granted it is an arcade game, and the goal of all arcade games is to make sure you spend enough money on them so the arcade operator is seeing a good return on their investment, so they're always going to feel a little bit cheaper than console games where a company has already gotten your money, you purchased the game, they can't really extract anything more out of you, outside of current days when there's DLC. But I would say that as far as arcade beat-em-ups go, it's fair, it's challenging, occasionally it's cheap, but otherwise it's not too bad. And I do love that you get a classic elevator level. I feel like it's just a beat-em-up staple as you're going to travel up an elevator and have just this combat arena. But you get those really nice graphical effects in the back, you have those skulls on the wall, you have all these enemies around, and the game never has any slowdown. It pushes a ton of enemy sprites around. At all times, you can get, you know, 8, 10 enemies on screen that you're fighting at once, and you're not going to have any slowdown whatsoever. There's no dropped inputs. Mechanically, the game feels really good. There is no issue with control whatsoever. If you hit the button, you're going to get a response, which was my complaint with the Switch version, where I felt like there was some sort of inherent lag in some of the button presses, where I was having a harder issue actually controlling the game. But now we're fighting this little knight armor guy here. I think it's a hollow armor, kind of like a ghost, who knows. We're going to do the special attack. And I love all the little details that Data East put in this. I don't want to ruin it quite yet, but look at the sword when we actually beat the boss and see what I'm talking about. As he's dying, that face kind of has a panic attack and it fades away. Even the sign Go switches over to Hell. 
And I will say if you are going to play this game, you 100% want to play the Japanese version, not the North American version. You're not really missing much story-wise, it's an arcade game, but the North American version has censorship. The blood is going to be green, like slime. The sign isn't going to say, go to hell, it just says, go. And generally, this is the way to play the game. There are no real big cuts to it, but if you're beating up zombies, that red blood definitely looks a lot better. And I love these vampires that you just break right out of their coffins, and we're getting really close to the Count Dracula fight, or I'm assuming that's his name, I don't speak Japanese, and I only played the Japanese version. Although honestly, I found this game in arcades as a kid, probably in like 95, 96, on my local arcade, The Dream Machine, and it definitely was in English, but I don't remember anything of the story. But I have had the chance to play this in arcades, but it came and it went. I think I maybe took a two week break from going to the arcades, and then suddenly the machine was just gone. And the rarity on this game is definitely up there. I would buy a PCB if I found a nice condition one working for a good deal. I can't find one. I've asked around, I've looked online, I've looked in Japan, the places where I buy my PCBs from if I get them imported, and there isn't any Night Stalker PCBs available. So this is definitely a rare game. It's probably up there with the rarity of Splatterhouse, the arcade PCB. It comes up for sale occasionally, and it sells quite quickly. But I do love the sun comes up as you beat Dracula. And now we're moving on to stage 5. I'm showing you guys bits and pieces of the game, but I'm not showing you the whole thing in the playthrough, but I will upload a full playthrough as well, so you guys can check it out, and I'll do that towards the end of the season. I kind of put them up sporadically when I have a chance. But you will see here, like I talked about earlier, there are a ton of enemies on screen, and each one of them is attacking at full speed. And you see I lost a life there quickly, and that's where that semi-cheapness comes in. But you always have that super move to get you out of a tough spot. Although it is the type of super move that's going to take your life bar down versus the type of super move where you have maybe one or two per life and you can collect more power-ups for them. And I would say the health and food in this game is pretty sporadic. And now we're fighting some sort of mummy. Kung Fu mummy? Who knows what his name is. Another great enemy though. But what I really like are the little touches that you get in between some levels that you're going to see right here. It is a two-player game, and you have these mini games. Granted, you're going to win. You see that sign for the Ripper Hospital back there and all the zombies cheering, but you mash the button, and you're going to see exactly what happens when the timer runs out. It is zombie bowling. I've never actually gotten a strike. I can mash buttons with the best of them. I've never once gotten that bar all the way filled. Maybe it's not possible. Maybe it's a coding error. Who knows? But listen to a little bit more of the music here because this is an absolutely outstanding scene. I want to get you to hear the soundtrack a bit more. And I'll come back in just a second and talk more and close out on Night Slashers. How could you not love this? It is a ghost helicopter piloted by a zombie. If you've seen it in gaming before, that I'll see it again, but as far as mini bosses are concerned, it is highly amusing to me with those zombies in that loading bay there and you've got the zombie pilot with the headset on. And that's what I mean when I say this game has a strange attention to detail that I absolutely love. Each sprite is very well detailed, there's a ton going on in the backgrounds, and Data East added a lot of flourish to the game to really make it stand out. And that's why to me it's really surprising that this game doesn't get as much press as I think it deserves. It's not in the same conversations as a lot of other classic beat-em-ups. You hear about Alien vs Predator on the CPS2, which we have talked about on the channel before, but this game is as good as that in my opinion, and I think a lot of people that like beat-em-ups might share that opinion. And it is just disappointing that for some reason this game doesn't get lauded in the same way because I absolutely think it deserves it. And 100%, if you haven't played this game yet and you like beat-em-ups, you definitely owe it to yourself to play it. It's very easy to emulate. It runs on pretty much any system. And you can try the Switch version if you want. Like I said, the control on it and the sound on it gave me issues. It didn't really feel that natural. But your mileage may vary, but I think this is definitely the way you want to play it outside of buying an original PCB, and if you see one, tell me about it, don't buy it up from underneath me, because I've been looking for this game for about a year now. But that is Night Slashers, an absolutely outstanding beat-em-up from Data East that more people need to play. Hope you enjoyed watching this. If you could do us a huge favor, go down below and hit like and subscribe. It definitely helps us out as these take a long time to make. Short of that, we will be back on Tuesday with another episode in our mainline series, and we have videos on Friday and Sunday as well. Short of that, thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.